catch them all. Hey guys, Pokedan here. As we all know, there are hundreds of Pokemon that currently exist within the franchise. To be a little bit more precise, there's just over 800 of them. Each and every Pokemon have different details that make them stand out. For example, they have different typings, abilities, design, species, and so much more. And for this video, Pokemon species will be something we'll be focusing on. And I say we, rather than I, because today, I'm joined by a friend of mine. What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and today I'll be joining Dan to talk about some of the most ridiculous Pokemon species out there. Like Dan said, each Pokemon has a different classification. For example, let's take a look at my boy, Cyndaquil. As you can see, Cyndaquil is the Fire Mouse Pokemon, so nothing you wouldn't expect to see. However, for this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the Pokemon with an unexpected or shocking species classification. Of course guys, this is just in our opinion, so be sure to let us know in the comments if you could find any more funny Pokemon species. Also, if you guys haven't seen already, we made a video over on Hoops' channel talking about some Pokemon design secrets. So if you've not seen that yet, be sure to check it out after this video. One more thing before we begin. Some of these species in the video may make some sense, but we've included them because to us, they initially seem rather peculiar, or we just got a good laugh out of them. But with all that being said, let's get started with the video. Let's kick it off with the Pokemon Zangoose. This normal type has been around since Generation 3 of Pokemon, and taking a look at its origins, it seems to be based on a Mongoose, hence the big rivalry with Surviper. But taking a look at this Pokemon species, you'll see that it is classified as the Cat Ferret Pokemon. It's really odd considering this Pokemon's origins doesn't mention cats or ferrets at all, apart from Zangoose being cat-like. Really? Zangoose should just be the Mongoose Pokemon. Another Pokemon with a questionable classification is Yanmega. This Pokemon is classed as the Ogre Dana Pokemon, and even though Dana makes sense, seeing as it's based on the Green Dana, a species of Dragonfly, we just can't figure out where the Ogre part comes from. Maybe because it's green, it takes inspiration from Shrek. Who knows? We reckon it should just be known as the Dana Pokemon because that just makes more sense. The next two Pokemon we'll be talking about actually have classifications that make sense, but they're also pretty funny. That is Pignight and its evolution, Embor. Pignite is known as the Fire Pig Pokemon. Pretty normal, right? Well, when it evolves into Embor, it turns into the Mega Fire Pig Pokemon. How does evolving into something a bit bigger change Pignite's classification into the Mega Pig? Not the most logical classification or the most professional one, but let's just roll with it. Dwebble and Crustle are also two Pokemon who are well known for living in the rocks on their backs, and even their class species suggests this. They are known as the Rock Inn Pokemon and the Stone Home Pokemon, and with classifications like these, they just sound like they're inviting you to stay over. One Pokemon that threw us off with their species initially was Azuril. Azuril is classified as the Polkadot Pokemon, and at first, this seemed odd because we know Polkadots to be a popular pattern. Yet, Azuril doesn't have this pattern on its design. However, after doing a bit of research, it turns out that Polkadots are known in Japan as Mizutama, meaning water balls. So, this classification does make sense, even if it doesn't at first glance. Coming up next, we have a bunch of bright Pokemon, and that's because their Pokedex classifications class them as the Sun Pokemon. It's Espeon, Sunflora, and Solgaleo. And I know what you're thinking, nothing out of the ordinary here, right? Well, one of these Pokemon is not like the others, and that's Solgaleo. Not because it's a legendary, but because it's classified as the Sun Pokemon. Solgaleo's origin shows that it's based on the lion that eats the sun in alchemy. So that's why it's the Sun Pokemon. Next up we have Mankey and Primeape, and both of these Pokemon are classified as the Pig Monkey Pokemon. It's no surprise to anyone that these Pokemon both represent monkeys, but that's something that's often overlooked is their pig-like snouts. That's most likely why they are known as the Pig Monkey Pokemon, however pig monkeys obviously aren't a thing in the real world, so it's interesting to see how these two animals fuse together to make one Pokemon. 
Another Pokemon that has the wrong classification is Unfezen, and it is known as the Proud Pokemon. Before anyone comments anything about this Pokemon being based on birds that like to strut their stuff, making them proud creatures, let's be honest here, Unfezen is a trash Pokemon, and it has nothing to be proud about. Sorry, Unfezen fans, that's just the way it is. We have a bunch of Pokemon that are classified as the Dragon Pokemon, but two of them don't make a lot of sense to be classed as this. And these Pokemon are Horsey and Seedra. Both of these non-Dragon types are known as the Dragon Pokemon, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense, even if they do later evolve into Kingdra. Another Pokemon that has a funny classification is Claydol, and for those of you who didn't know already, it's classed as the Clay Doll Pokemon. Whoa. Clay doll is the clay doll? That's a massive surprise! Next up, we have a bunch of Pokemon being the Tynamo Evolution line, Pachirizu, and Galvantula, and one thing all of these Pokemon have in common is their typing of electric. However, it's the electric type that puts them on this list, because all of these Pokemon have the Ella prefix in their species name, followed by the creature that they're based on, such as Ella Squirrel, Ella Spider, and Ella Fish. Why wouldn't you just keep it simple? Get rid of that part of the classification and let them be known as the Fish Pokemon, the Squirrel Pokemon, or the Spider Pokemon, or even the Electric Spider electric fish and electric squirrel why do you feel the need to abbreviate it because you're basically making another pokemon name within a pokemon name the next pokemon's classification actually does make sense but when we first saw it it took us a bit by surprise and that is masquerade which is known as the eyeball pokemon Upon first glance, this might seem like a bit of an odd species for Masquerade to be a part of, but if you look at its antenna, it actually appears to have an eyeball pattern. Happini is yet another Pokemon with an interesting classification. This happy little guy is known as the Playhouse Pokemon. And I don't know about you, but when I think of playhouses, I think of those wooden toys that small children play with. If we take a look at Happini's origins, it's pretty much based on infant children. So I suppose its species does make sense. Up next, we have the only Ultra Beast to make this list, Guzzlord. This monster of a Pokemon is classified as the junk of all Pokemon. And what's funny about this is that the Urban Dictionary defines a junk of all to be something that eats mostly unhealthy food. And honestly, Guzzlord, my guy, I can relate. Give me a Mackie D's over a Subway any day. Sure, it might be the more unhealthy option, but goddamn is it delicious. Speaking of unhealthy, coming in next we have the ice cream Pokemon Vanillux, and did I say ice cream Pokemon? Because it's actually not. Even though you'd expect Vanillux to be part of a species like this, it's instead classified as the Snowstorm Pokemon. And don't get me wrong, with its snow warning ability it makes perfect sense, but all we're saying is that if it was known as the ice cream Pokemon or the snow cone Pokemon, that would be way more fascinating. Up next, we have another Pokemon from the Kanto region, this time being Starmie. This Pokemon has been around for over 20 years, yet its true origin still remains a mystery. Speaking of mystery, Starmie is classified as the mysterious Pokemon, so who knows? Maybe in future games, the real truth behind this Pokemon and where it comes from will actually be explored. Fighting-type Pokemon are known for being super strong. Just take a look at Pokemon like Machamp or Conkeldu. You wouldn't want to get on their bad side. However, saying that, we do have a few fighting types that are really friendly. The Pokemon Monfuno and Pancham are even known as the playful Pokemon. So if you have any of these on your team, you'll be destined for an enjoyable journey. Coming up next, we have the Alola Bird Trumbeak. And this Pokemon is classified as the Buglebeak Pokemon. You see, this was another one that got me confused at first. But after doing some research, it turns out that this species does make sense. Trumbeak's beak is originated from musical instruments. And since the Bugle is an instrument, this Pokemon species is logical. Another Pokemon with a ridiculous classification is Vullaby, and it's classified as the Diaper Pokemon. I mean, it's one thing to tell someone they stink, but branding them as a diaper... Uh, that's a bit harsh. Joking aside, Vullaby is based on a vulture chick, and part of its design shows a skull-like object making up a diaper on this Pokemon's body. So yeah, Vullaby's species does make sense, but it doesn't mean that it's not a funny classification. The final Pokemon we'll be talking about today is Togedemaru, and this little guy is classified as the Roly Poly Pokemon. 
In different parts of the world, a roly-poly is known as many things. For example, in the US, a roly-poly is an insect, and in the UK, it's a forward roll. But none of these things really remind us of Togedemaru, seeing as how it's not a bug or known for doing gymnastics. However, looking up the definition of roly-poly, it's defined as something that is round or plump, and well, that's exactly how Togedemaru looks. So, yet again, this is a species that you probably won't understand at first, but it makes perfect sense. But anyway guys, with all that being said, that pretty much wraps things up for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Also, be sure to let us know about more funny Pokemon species down in the comment section. And also, I just want to give a big thanks to Hoops and Hip Hop for joining me in this video. Thanks for having me, Dan. Remember guys, Dan and I also made a video over on my channel talking about Pokemon design secrets. So once you're done here, be sure to go check that out. But with all that being said, for now, I've been Pokedan, you've been amazing, and I'll see you guys next time.